Okay, so we are in the middle of section 6.5, and we're doing an example. We're finishing up the section on calorimetry, talking about coffee cup calorimeters. And the 12.30 class is a little bit behind the 10.30 class, so some of this is just uh, to be getting the 12.30 class caught up to the 10.30. And then also in the 10.30 class, there were a couple of um, things that I wrote wrong in your notes that we need to fix towards the end of the class. First of all, the coffee cup calorimeter is a constant pressure calorimeter, not a constant volume calorimeter. I mean, it is constant volume too because volumes of liquids aren't really changing, but it's open to the atmosphere, so it doesn't have the ability to build up pressure. And in uh, this particular example that we're going to do, we're doing an acid-based neutralization, hydroiodic acid with sodium hydroxide to make sodium iodide in water, and we have a delta H for that exothermic reaction. We have 135 mils of 0 0.450 molar hydroiodic acid at 23.15 degrees C. I do want both of these solutions at the same temperature, and in the 1030 class we started to make them at two different temperatures, but I've changed my mind and I don't want, um, we're not going to deal with that. The hydroiodic solution is mixed with 145 mils of 0 0.500 molar sodium hydroxide at the same temperature. We want to calculate what the final temperature is of the solution, or the maximum temperature. To solve this problem, we're going to assume that the solution that we make has the same specific heat as water. The specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree C, and it also has the same density as water, 1 gram per milliliter. And when you do your Hess's Law lab next week, you're going to be making the, these same assumptions for um, for your coffee cup calorimetry experiment. So just make a note of that, that these are the assumptions that you're also going to use for your lab data calculation. So to solve this problem, we're going to take three steps. First of all, we're going to determine our actual delta H for this reaction. We've got a delta H, negative 51 kilojoules per mole for one mole of HI, one mole of NaOH, one mole of sodium iodide, one mole of water. We want to use the quantities given to us in this problem and figure out exactly how much HI are we reacting and exactly how much energy is being given off by that reaction. So we're going to get our actual delta H, and then we're going to use the delta H and the mass of the solution and um, these equations up here to calculate the change in temperature. So we're going to say this much heat is coming off, and remember we said that the um, heat capacity is given by the mass times the specific heat. So we're going to figure out what is our mass of solution. We know what its specific heat is. We know how much heat is coming off. What is our delta T? And then once we figured out delta T, we're going to say, well, here's our initial temperature, and this is how much our temperature changed, so let's calculate what the final temperature is. So our step one is to figure out our actual delta H. How many moles are we reacting? And we could choose anything in this equation to look at. It doesn't really matter. Well, we're not going to really choose anything. We're just going to keep it generic. How many moles are reacting? And this is going to require us to use our knowledge of stoichiometry from Chapter 3. So we've got a certain quantity of hydroiodic acid. We have a certain quantity of sodium hydroxide. We need to figure out which one of these is limiting the production of sodium iodide and water. So what we want to do is figure out how many moles of HI we have and how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have, our two reactants. Starting with HI, we have 0 0.450 moles for every 1,000 milliliters or 1 liter. And the problem tells us that we have 135 milliliters. And that turns out to be 0 0.608 moles of HI. And that's how much we actually have available to react. Now we're going to calculate how much sodium hydroxide we have. 
using its concentration, 0 0.500 moles of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, for every one liter, or 1,000 milliliters, times the volume, 145 milliliters, and that works out to be 0 0.0725 moles of sodium hydroxide available. The reaction is going to be limited by the quantity of HI. It's our limiting reagent. Now, all of the HI is going to react completely. We don't need to figure out how much product we're making because our delta H that we have for the reaction, it is negative 56.1 kilojoules for every one mole of HI that reacted or every one mole of sodium hydroxide that reacted or one mole of sodium iodide produced or one mole of H2O produced. Since we know how much HI has reacted or will be reacting, we can use this quantity in conjunction with our delta H to figure out what the actual heat of this reaction will be. So we are going to use our delta H like a conversion factor. It is negative 56.1 kilojoules for every one mole of HI. Our actual quantity of HI is 0 0.0608. And if our sodium hydroxide was the limiting reagent, we'd be using the sodium hydroxide here in this step instead. And that tells us that our actual heat evolved is negative 3.41 kilojoules. And that is our heat of reaction. Now what we want to do Let's go back to these equations that we were looking at and deriving and using on Friday. And we said that the heat of the reaction was the negative heat of the calorimeter because all of the heat that's given off by the reaction is absorbed by the calorimeter. So that tells us that QCal is positive 3.41 kilojoules because the heat that's lost by the reaction is then being absorbed by the calorimeter. We also saw that QCal is CCal, the heat capacity, times the change in temperature, delta T. And in our notes, you'll see that the definition of the heat capacity is mass times specific heat. So we can rewrite this equation as ms delta t, where we're substituting m and s for big C cal, heat, heat capacity. In this problem, the only thing that we don't know here is delta t. So we can take this equation, q cal, the heat given off by, or heat absorbed by the calorimeter, which we know to be 3.41, and say that's equal to the mass of the solution times the specific heat of the solution, both of which we know, times the change in temperature. Isolating variables, you know how I like to do my math. Uh, we're going to get Q cal over M S. Q cal is 3.41 kilojoules. The mass of the solution, the problem said to assume that the density is the same as that of water. 135 milliliters are going to weigh 135 grams. And 145 milliliters are going to weigh 145 grams. And I have to stop this because I have a 10 minute time limit. So this is just going to be paused and then there will be a part two.